The future of James Harden. It's tonight's breaking news here on Sports Center. Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting that James Harden is picking up his player option with the Sixers. That will pay him $35.6 million next season after averaging 21 points in a league leading 11 dimes. Harden had been seeking a long term deal but couldn't come together here with Philadelphia. And Woj is joining us now with much more on this developing story. What does this now mean for James Harden as well as the Sixers? Uh, Kevin, what it means is that James Harden has likely played his last game in Philadelphia less than two years after forcing his way to the Sixers in a trade from Brooklyn. $35.5 million he opts into, uh, and now he's available to be traded. And the Sixers have already started to talk to teams around the league uh, about a James Harden deal. Uh, but this was essentially James Harden looking out into free agency if he had declined that player option and not seeing perhaps the long-term, the kind of long-term commitment he wanted from the Sixers mm. or perhaps another team. Houston had been a team where there had been a mutual interest and the Rockets have over $60 million in cap space, uh, but their focus has been elsewhere uh, in free agency. And I think for James Harden, his best chance to be on a contending team this year was to opt in and find a trade. But I think it's his expectation and also the Sixers that they're going to find a trade. We'll see how long that takes. What are the landing spots in your mind right now, especially with you saying, let's see how long it takes? The most prominent uh, team out there with James Harden right now is the Los Angeles Clippers. They have been on the search for a point guard uh, to lead that group. Uh, I think certainly there's a real opportunity for them to bring Russell Westbrook back in free agency free agency he was outstanding for them last year but certainly Harden would bring a different dimension they brought in John Wall last year in free agency it didn't work out uh, what's the pathway to a deal there I think this is a Clippers team that is not going to be interested in trading any of its good young players is there a deal with expiring contracts with a future draft pick but the Sixers are want to get they're going to want to get some value back for James Harden uh, New York's another team that I think is going to look at this uh, they've got a lot of assets. If perhaps they didn't have to give up much to get Harden. That's a tougher trade for Philly, putting him in their own division. There's going to be other teams interested in Harden, uh, but Daryl Morey is in a window here where he's trying to win a championship mm -hmm. around Joel Embiid. I'm not sure how quickly this is going to go. Okay, by the way, free agency is scheduled to begin less than 24 hours from now. Ryan, James Harden has just opted in. What does that mean, and what does it portend? It means that he didn't reach an agreement uh, with the Philadelphia 76ers on a new contract. And, um, um, you know, the issue here is that I don't think he had much of a market in, uh, in straight free agency um, because there just isn't teams out there that have a lot of money that are willing to pay him and sign and trades are very difficult because they're subject to a whole different set of rules. And so he's bypassing free agency and he's going to try to force a trade. And few people in NBA history have more experience in forcing trades than James Harden. And so here we go. Uh, the next few days are going to be interesting. And the first domino here, guys, was last night when, in a surprise move, the Los Angeles Clippers released Eric Gordon to knock $21 million off their payroll. And I got to say, yes, it was a lot of money coming off their payroll, but the LA Clippers don't do things to save money unless something else is going on. And as soon as that happened, the wheels started moving. What are the Clippers doing? What are the Clippers doing? And that is what has brought us here because I think the negotiations with Harden and the Sixers weren't going well. The Clippers were aware of it and they are, by getting Gordon off their books, they make their situation cleaner to set up for a possible trade with the Sixers and James Harden. Now, there are other teams I would expect to jump in here. I don't think this is a done deal, but the Clippers have expiring contracts. They have two first round picks that they can offer in trade and they have um, the ability to, uh, you know, offer, you know, an, an array of different players that could help the 76ers. And so um, I think the Clippers are deep, deep, neck deep into this. It went all the way down to the wire for Harden to pick up the option almost exactly to 5 o'clock when he picked it up. But he has. And watch out for the LA Clippers creating a new big three with, with, uh, with James Harden, uh, Paul George, and Kawhi Leonard figuring out how that might go. Brian, as always with the NBA, we, we, we couldn't wait to actually see that. 
even though getting all three of them on the court at the same time for more than five games might be something you'd want to go to the betting window on, you've established the Clippers and Kawhi and Paul George staying. Who else might be? Give me another team, because it's, it's hard to imagine if the Clippers are involved that the Knicks wouldn't say, oh, wait, us too, even though they might not have the assets, but would the Knicks be involved? Yeah, so Adrian Wojnarowski has reported that the Knicks are one of the teams that Harden would have an interest in. I think the Knicks, what might be interesting, guys, is I think they're trying to save their um, their powder for maybe a huge name player that might become available in the next year. And so they got a question, is it worth using some of their draft assets or some of their young players in trade for James Harden now? Or can they wait for a potentially younger player that might be a better fit. Remember, whoever trades for James Harden is going to have to deal with him on a one-year contract. And his, his contract is structured in a way that he can't extend it. So you're trading for a guy on the last year of his deal that you're going to have to deal with this in a year. He had difficulty coming to terms at age 33 here with, with Philadelphia, who had reason to re-sign him. Whatever they were offering, he didn't like. And I don't blame him for playing hardball. You're going to inherit that situation next year. So uh, you know, it's 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 obviously trading for a player that doesn't have a lot of money left, but it's trading for a player that you might just be renting, and that'll affect the price. I uh, will get you out of here on this, but it's the other big name that surfaced today. Uh, Chris Haynes is reporting that Kyrie Irving plans to meet with the Phoenix Suns tomorrow. Could you see Kyrie Irving reuniting with Kevin Durant in Phoenix? It would be very difficult and unlikely because of the rules on what it would take for a sign and trade. The, the Suns are way, way above the, where's my hand? <laughs> the Suns are way, way, way above the apron that is required for you to be underneath. So you, it would take a three-team deal, potentially. Uh, if there's one thing harder than a three-team deal, it's a three-team sign and trade. Um, it's not impossible, but it's very unlikely. And frankly, from the outside, it looks like a leverage play. Having said that, it now appears like Philadelphia may be in need of a point guard. And there may be an option there for Kyrie Irving to continue to, to test that situation. So I would not be surprised if we see Kyrie want to investigate what's going on in Philadelphia. If Harden moves out, if there's a window for him to come in. The other name here is Dame Lillard. Is it possible that Philadelphia, if James Harden moves out, could acquire assets from Los Angeles, put their assets together, and prepare an offer for Dame Lillard? That wow. is an option. Kyrie Irving potentially would be an option, or they could go with Tyrese Maxey, take whatever assets they, they might get in a James Harden trade, and send him send those assets somewhere else for somebody else. So we had kind of what was looking like a mundane free agency period. James Harden has forced the issue because his market was narrow, and now we're going to have a circus probably for the next two or three days. Circus ah, is circus. Fun. Circus, a circus is fun. Hot stove How about every Kyrie getting fun. booed in Thank Philly you, every night by those fans? How about that? Woo. Big breaking news out of the NBA. James Harden plans to opt in, not out, opt in to his $35.6 million player option for next season. That is per multiple reports. The Sixers then plan to work with Harden to find a trade partner for the 10-time All-Star. Both the Clippers and the Knicks Expected to be in play for Harden, that is per multiple reports. And once the trade is complete, it will end a one-and-a-half season stint there in Philadelphia for James Harden. Let's welcome in NBA insider and writer Bill Ryder on the phone with us about this breaking news regarding James Harden. Uh, Bill, I think a lot of people thought James Harden would end up staying in Philly. Turns out that is not going to be the case. Your initial reaction to all of this? Uh, utter surprise, and there's nothing like NBA for agency for, for a little excitement, Amanda. I talked to a, a general manager earlier today who thought James Harden was probably going to be in Philly, but he said, we all know if it's not Philadelphia, it's Houston. Turns out it's not true. It is a great big open world for Harden, and he could go, I think, one of several places, given the fact, as we're hearing, that he wants to uh, opt into this deal and, and then have the ability to be traded almost certainly to a contender. What do you think led to this decision instead of deciding to stay there in Philadelphia? Well, I'll tell you this. Talking to folks in that Philly organization, there certainly wasn't universal agreement about whether they wanted James Harden back. And there was some speculation around the NBA that Harden might opt into that deal and stay, even though Philadelphia wasn't entirely convinced he was the right fit going forward with the new head coach they have in place and what they hope is a better future in terms of the success they've had or the lack of success 
in the postseason. I mean, $36 million at Harden's age is a lot of money. It's a lot of leverage. So I think this is one of those situations where he gets the best of both worlds. He gets that deal. He'll almost certainly find a way to turn this into an extension with whatever team he's traded to. But it also allows Philadelphia to get something in return for him. Because remember, not that long ago, they gave up a lot to bring him from Brooklyn. And this sounds like a way for a happy ending for everybody. Daryl Morey, who runs basketball operations for Philadelphia, and James Harden are very close. They're basically friends, as much as a GM and a player can be. So to me, this sounds like a win-win for everybody. Okay, look, 10 times All-Star, and, and you talked about it there, the potential return for James Harden. I mean, what could Philly be looking at in return for James Harden? Yeah, well, I mean, the short answer is anything, right? Because there was the very real concern. It was almost a catch-22. They were worried he would leave for Houston and get nothing in return. There were also people who were worried within the organization, not Daryl Morey, that their boss, Daryl Morey, would give Harden an extension and tie them to a player who's just not been as effective going forward. So there are reports out there that the Clippers and the Knicks are interested. I can confirm the report with the Clippers. I have not confirmed the report with the Knicks, but it makes sense. There are players you can bring in that are young on lesser salaries, two or three guys, and you can add the kind of depth that a lot of people in Philadelphia think you need to surround Joel Embiid with. And again, not this is not a criticism of James Harden. He is a star player. He has been an MVP. He can be impactful, but he's never fit with Joel Embiid. It just hasn't worked on the court. As I understand it, hasn't been a perfect fit off the court. So the chance to reset and bring in several role players, maybe a borderline all-star in exchange for Harden is probably what Philly's looking to do. All right, Bill. We, we got the Knicks that have been thrown out there. The Clippers have been thrown out there. Uh, as you mentioned, this is the NBA free agency. We know and love it is already getting wild. Where could you potentially see Harden landing? I think New York City makes, makes a lot of sense. That's an ambitious organization. Uh, that is a front office that believes that James Harden can have an impact. And the Clippers, too. And I know that's already been reported. I mean, lost it. the thing about the Clippers are, and this is, they'll have to move on from Marcus Morris in order to make the numbers work and probably other pieces. They have bet that front office a lot of their own political capital on the idea. They've convinced Steve Ballmer that they could be a championship contender. And they haven't done that. Paul George hasn't stayed healthy, we know. Kawhi Leonard has not stayed healthy, we know. And so when you're desperate, a name like James Harden is probably enough to convince your boss that you know what you're doing and take a stab for it. So I think it's those kinds of teams that have big expectations for this upcoming season in a smaller window, because Harden's not going to be an impact player two, three, four years from now. Those are the kind of teams that would make sense. And I'm told to keep an eye, unlikely though it would be, maybe, maybe on an organization like Atlanta that thinks they can make a push with a new front office if they could find the right deal. No matter where he lands, it appears James Harden has played his last game in a 76ers uniform. Bill Ryder, we appreciate it. There are a lot of NBA news is about to come down the pipeline as free agency, as you take a look at the upcoming dates, gets underway tomorrow. Today, that deadline for teams and those player options as well. James Harden again deciding to opt into his, likely looking at a trade out of Philadelphia. And then tomorrow, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, free agency gets underway. Breaking news out of the NBA, James Harden planning to not opt out, but opt in to his $35.6 million player option for next season. That is from multiple reports. The Philadelphia 76ers plan to work with Harden to find a trade partner for the 10-time All-Star. Both the Clippers and Knicks have been teams that have been thrown out there. Uh, we talked to Bill Ryder, who said maybe a team like Atlanta that thinks that they can make a push with another playmaker. Once the trade is completed, it will end a one-and-a-half season stint in Philadelphia. Or Harden. Hey, what's up, guys? Jag from Jaggy Sports. Breaking news James Harden has opted into his contract in his final year worth $35 million a year with the Philadelphia 76ers in order to get a trade. He has played his last game in Philadelphia and will get traded. The two teams that are interested emerging as of right now are the LA Clippers and the New York Knicks. Now, this makes all the perfect sense in the world because last night, Buddy calls me and he says, hey, I think a move is coming and from the Clippers. And he goes, why would they waive Eric Gordon? Why would they want to trade Norman Powell? Why would they want to trade Marcus Morris? I, st I just said, maybe they're just trying to cut costs. And then I said, well, this is Steve Ballmer. He's got a lot of money. Does he really care? I don't think he cares. So now it's kind of like, okay, 
I see what's going on here. They're trying to form a big three. They're trying to form Paul George, James Harden, and Kawhi Leonard. So at the end of the day, that is what's happening in the Clipper land. Clippers don't really have any picks, right? They don't, I, I haven't looked at their, at their uh, future list, but I'm pretty sure they gave it all, all the way for, to Paul, uh, to um, the OKC Thunder in exchange for Paul George. I, I'm pretty sure they have a couple, right? A couple left, but the, but the, the, thing with the Clippers is they have a lot of young talent, a lot of young talent. I know they have Trey Mann, Tr Terrence Mann, but you know, they already have Tyrese Maxey, the Philadelphia 76ers. So what could the Clippers really, really give up besides Norman Powell and Marcus Morris? For James Harden, that doesn't make any sense in the world. Now let's move over to the New York Knicks. New York Knicks have a lot of assets, a lot of assets. I actually see this deal going down because of the fact that, you know, 76ers Darren Morey is no fool. He knows I want picks. I don't want, um, and I want like a star in return kind of thing like that to play alongside Joel Embiid. But, you know, the Knicks have a lot more to offer to the 76ers than the Clippers do. So if I'm thinking from the 76ers perspective, right, this is really good because of the fact that now you get to shine Tyrese Maxey. I've been telling everybody, I've been raving about this kid for a long time. All he need is his moment and he's going to get it. He's going to get it now because James Harden is leaving. What are you going to put alongside um, Tyrese Maxey? And what are you going to put alongside um, Joel Embiid? You're going you're gonna to need shooters, obviously, right? Power forward and Tobias, Tobias Harris, you know, he's in his last year of his contract. But what could the New York Knicks give up? I know they can give up a lot of picks. I know they, they can give up a lot of picks. And quite frankly, um, you probably want to give up a, another star in the making kind of thing, whether it be uh, Obi Toppin or whether it be Emmanuel Qu Quickly. I don't know, but this news is just shocking because the fact that I didn't see this coming. I thought it was Houston or Philly and all signs pointed pointed to Philly then all of a sudden this happens this is gonna send shock waves throughout the entire NBA and quite frankly could actually put everything on hold because the fact oh except for the main guys except for the or the, you know what I mean because the thing is now you want to know where James Harden's gonna end up if you're in the East and you plan to sign in the East and you think that James Harden's going to the Knicks, that's just going to make the, the Eastern Conference a lot tougher. If you're a guy that wants to sign in the West and the Clippers are, are wanting to get him, that's just going to make the, Clip, uh, the, the West even tougher. So this is, this is going to have ripple effects. And quite frankly, the next, I don't know, I'm guessing uh, 48 hours is going to be crucial. Any updates, I will let you guys know. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are. Who's he going to? Is he going to the Clippers or is he going to the Knicks? Or is it a surprise team we don't know about? This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.